Okay, boys and girls, we're going to be doing the conclusion of the stolen Porsche saga. It's going to be good. But before we get into that, we need to do a little housekeeping. Believe it or not, that car has a secret that I didn't know about that no one even told me about when I bought it. And it gets even a little bit better. It gets a lot better. This car has a secret that I didn't know about. When I bought these cars, no one ever told me that they are all GPS located. The BMW has a GPS system in it, and so does the Porsche. And in case they're stolen, all I gotta do is enter the VIN number and it will be activated and my cars can be tracked. Now, there was one smart, smart cookie out there who said if he had LoJack on that Porsche, he would have had it back. And you were 100% correct because the Porsche, whoever bought that Porsche years ago, enabled it with LoJack. And when I put in my police report and entered that VIN number in, it interfaced with the LoJack um, database and flipped the switch and my car was found in 47 hours. Which means that Darius lied. We'll get about that to Darius. And there was also a chick involved. She was very, very involved. So this is what these criminals, their criminals did. Darius rented my car for two days. Then he gave it to this other chick who actually sold my car on Craigslist. Let me say that again. These criminals sold my car on Craigslist for $14,000. Now, this is where it gets really interesting because you're familiar with the six degrees of separation. The car was sold to the owner of Eurofed, which I used to lower my BMW and put an exhaust on. So I had done business with him and we had a very long conversation and that's who's actually putting in my GPS kill switches. You know, a little bit on that. Uh, I took the cars for the GPS kill switches to one of his locations. They have 13 here in Georgia, two in other states. And uh, the technicians were having a problem putting in the GPS kill switches. So I called Mickey and Mickey's like, I'm on my way there. I'll call you in five minutes. So Mickey goes ahead, gets the Acura TL, takes it to the Buckhead location, where is this wonderful guy named George who put it in in 15 minutes. I'm making the point of this. Mickey is a millionaire. He has a multi-million dollar a month business, and he personally took action to service my car. The same level of action that Tiffany, Andrea, and Xavier should have been exhibiting to bring my car back when they weren't paying. It's kind of funny how that worked out. But yes, these criminals, and once again, I'm just blacking out like the chick who sold my car. Um, I believe Darius and this chick are in on it together and Darius will be arrested. This is the process. I have to go down to court and speak, go for a judge, state my case, and the judge will issue an arrest warrant for him. What they will try to do is go to his house to arrest him. If he isn't there, the next time he gets caught at a traffic stop, boom, he will be arrested. Interestingly enough, Tiffany was arrested last year for arson, the one with the other BMW. So one of my friends, who I, I believe to be really smart, she said something that I believe is true. This is not their first rodeo. 
these are deviants of society. These are bad people, bad actors. And one of the things that I'm going to go down there and I'm going to swear the warrant for his arrest and the warrant for Tiffany's arrest just to cause them some pain in their life. I don't fully expect to get any money out of these people because they don't have any money. I don't expect to get any money out of these people. But I will get the satisfaction of knowing that they will be put in handcuffs. They will have to sit in the back of a police officer's car. They'll be taken to jail. They'll be fingerprinted and they'll have mug shots. That's a small consolation for the things. But yes, they actually sold my car. Remember the story that, hey, I let some chick drive my car and she got carjacked. And remember, many of you were like, that doesn't sound right. And it was 100% false because what Darius did is gave this chick my car and she sold it. He couldn't sell it because there would be a direct chain of evidence. And I don't think this is the first time they've done this because here it is. I have to go down there and file a police, you know, get arrest warrant and Mickey also has to file charges to get her arrested. So essentially what I feel that these are professional criminals and they know how this works because this is why he says like, I can't sell the car because whoever I sell the car to, because essentially this was the story. My father bought the car at auction and I don't like it. And my dad told me to sell the money and once I sell the car, we would split the money. Where is the title? And she's like, oh, I will get the title for you. I want you to think about this. You know, and Mickey, who's a millionaire, smart businessman, he said she had a really, really good story. And Mickey, as you saw, got her driver's license. He got a copy of her lease, a copy of her lease. So that's her real name, unless they had a fake driver's license and a fake lease. And going back to my conversation with my uh, customer service rep at Hire Car, these people don't have a plan beyond tomorrow. So more than likely, Mickey will file, she'll get arrested, and then they're gonna, you know, you're, you're not getting the money back. You're not getting the money back. And I was so emotionally disgusted by this whole process that I sold the Porsche to Mickey. He bought the Porsche twice. And uh, he gave me some credit for these GPSs. I can get seven GPSs installed and then I got to start paying. But I am beyond pleased with the level of professionalism, the service, and they're helping me out greatly. Because I have cars right now that have GPS systems. And I found out that one of my renters lives in the hotel. Yep, she lives in the hotel. But she hasn't been late. So once again, you have 24 hours to be late and then I turn that bad boy off. And one of the things, and th this, this is really, really interesting. Um, I had someone that wanted to do a seven day rental on hire car for the Mercedes. And I declined that because right now that Mercedes at Eurofed is getting a GPS kill switch. I am so nervous of my nicer inventory that I'm not renting that car out again until that GPS kill switch is put in there. So the Mercedes is going to have a GPS kill switch. All of my BMWs, I actually ended up buying another BMW this weekend. Uh, I got to get an oil change and then Monday, I'm going to take it to have a kill switch put in. And then essentially all my BMWs, because I got one BMW that is out that um, doesn't have a kill switch, but the guy who rented it, he's never been late. So once that comes back, I will have a GPS kill switch put on it. And, you know, this whole thing has taught me a lesson. I've been doing this. We're about to enter my 10th week, 
my 10th week and these are the lessons that I learned. I feel that 70% of the people on hire car are legit, good people, hardworking people. They just try and make some money. That's what I think. And also, I will tell you one thing I've discovered. There was someone who rented the BMW. Remember, I did not send, sell the BMW SUV because I wanted to earn more money before I trade out of it. If it continues to perform, I may not sell it. But there was a guy who was calling me over and over and over. He did not leave a message. And then he said, you know, you, you should be more attentive. And I told him once again, look, bro, I did you a favor. Normally I'm closed on weekends. I did this to help you out. And I ain't hear nothing else from him. And incidentally, with the GPS kill switches, every time someone speeds, it sends you an alert. I've gotten four alerts from the X5, one doing 95 in the X5. And um, long as he don't wreck it, I'm not going to message him or anything. Because essentially, I don't want them to know that I know. I'm not even telling anybody, oh yeah, you know, there's a GPS kill switch in there. Because I don't want them messing with it. I don't want them to be aware. I want them to, I want them to be aware when they go out and they haven't paid me for 24 hours and they go out and it's like, the car won't start. Hey man, um, the car won't start. I was like, you know why? Because I turned it off because you're not paying me. You pay me, I'll turn it back on. If you're not gonna pay me, please do me the favor of leaving the key in the driver's seat and I'll come get my property. Because this is one of the things. Um, I Recent story, I had a white chick she fell behind two days and I asked her to bring the car back. And you know what she did? She brought the car back on a full tank of gas and she washed it. All right, I'm about to say something. Black folks, we want to be respected, but many of us are not respectable. I am a black businessman trying to help out black folks and I have been screwed. Uh, these late rentals have probably cost me $3,000 this month. $3,000. Especially going with the Andrea Williams, the one with the BMW, Xavier Rhodes, player, player. Yeah, I'm mentioning names because I'm going to start exposing these clowns because roaches don't like light. And I'm like, light is an amazing disinfectant because when you turn on the light, roaches, they start running everywhere. They, they start off. But I'm learning a lot. I am learning so much. And like I said, last week we turned a corner. I don't think that I'm gonna have the issues because essentially the white chick was driving a Camry. When they can't pay for the Camry and I ask them to bring, bring them back, they bring them back. But the BMWs, and also my friend, her name is Sharon, I think she's really astute. She said, they want, they want to flex and stunt like they can afford a BMW, and that's why they want to bring them back. I've literally been cost $3,700 uh, between Player Player and Andrea. They've collectively cost me because she paid for four weeks. And that was like almost $2,000. Then she went. And once again, here's something else. And this is why I'm so glad I have these GPS kill switches. When they're late, they don't want to respond. Like the gay dude. He was late. He kept coming up with excuse, excuse. And then when I send that invoice, and he didn't pay. The next day, I was like, if I'm going to bring my car back, I'm going to call the police. And that's how I got my car back. And one of the things that is so crazy about this is I'm dealing with professional criminals. And I'm, I'm about to go a step beyond. As y'all know, I'm moving. And uh, I looked at a penthouse in Buckhead. And I'm not moving there because I didn't like the environment. You know what the environment was? a bunch of young black people and call me overly critical. I don't care. 
I don't want to be in a place with a bunch of young black folks because young black folks don't give a shit. They, they just don't give a damn. And one of the things I'm, I'm being aware of, because I'm looking at these buildings, I'm looking at the reviews, and wherever there's a bunch of young black folks, there is copious weed smoking. And this is funny, and you know, and not to say that only black folks smoke weed, because I used to date a girl that lived in a sky house, an apartment complex in Buckhead, and one day we were coming back from going out, and literally there was a bunch of white people in the elevator, and the, the weed was just blowing out, blowing out, blowing out. They were high as kites up in there. But I am beginning to see a certain demographic and a certain level of behavior. And what I'm getting ready to do, future things that are happening, um, I know it's blowing y'all mind that they sold my car. They, and this is sold it two days after he rented it. Two days. I believe that I was targeted. It's like, hey, we're going to get this Porsche, we're going to rent it, and we're going to sell it. And then he even asked me if there was a tracker on it. And I didn't reply, but if there was a tracker on it, I would know where my car was. And part of me, because I'm going to tell you why I sold the Porsche. Check engine light was on. And I decided to cut my losses because the Porsche did about 2000 It had an $1,800 repair. Um, cost me eighteen. dollars So I essentially lost $4,000. And this is why I'm not selling the X5 just yet. Rent it out three, four months. And if it rents out well, I'll just keep it. But if not, I'll get rid of it. But essentially, last week was we're going to cut the hemorrhaging. We're going to cut the losses. We're not going to have people keeping your car for two weeks and not paying you because over time, here's the thing. All those cars that came back late, ex you know, except for the one I got from the dude really quick, there was damage. And what they're going to do, what these monkeys, these yard birds, these disgusting individuals are going to do is they're going to tear up your car. They're going to just tear it up because they're driving it like it's theirs, but in their mind, they know it's not theirs. And this is lessons learned because we're in phase two. And one of the things that I've learned is how to get my cars back really quick. Because once I see danger signs and the danger signs, they're late immediately. Danger sign number one, uh, the white girl, she rented it out, then she went late and I worked her and I got the car back in almost three days. So the BMW dude, he was late, I got the car back in five days. So what I'm learning to do is you have to be really proactive because if they keep your car for weeks at a time and they're not paying you, they're gonna tear it up. And also, Tiffany, someone in the comments, Tiffany was arrested for arson. Arson. Um, last summer. So she's got some issues. And as my friend said, this ain't their first rodeo. I believe Darius and this chick are professional criminals. They've done this to someone else and they're going to do it to someone else in the future if they can have access. And I don't know when a uh, hire car does a background check if they do a criminal records check, but you know what? Tiffany was arrested, but here's the thing. If you know the thing about the law, let's say I go down, I file out the police report and Darius gets arrested four weeks later. It's going to be a year or two before his trial comes up if he doesn't plead out. So, Tiffany may have not even had her date in court yet, and that would not come up as a felony or an, uh, as a conviction because she hasn't been formally convicted. So this is real interesting, but I feel it was a good week. Uh, I feel that a lot went, a lot was learned, and I feel more empowered because these GPS kill switches, because like essentially, I can look on the dashboard and see where my vehicles are. 
And this is how I know this chick's living in the hotel because every time I check, it's parked at the hotel, which means she lives there. And maybe she's trying to work her way out. I don't know because uh, sometimes I check, she's all over the place, which means she's working. So we will see. She's a young chick, but we will see. But I am, because here's the plan. Uh, since I don't have a problem with the Camrys and getting them back when they're late, I'm not going to put the GPS kill switches on the Camry. Uh, they were cheap. I don't see it. Because uh, I will have a GPS kill switch on all of the BMWs, and I'm probably going to put a GPS kill switch on the Acuras when they come back, because anything that's over $10,000, I'm putting a, Q a GPS kill switch on it, and... I don't know what I'm gonna do with the Range Rovers. I have one Range Rover that's in. I rented out two cars today. I have one Range Rover that is, cause here's the hit list. The Mini's gone. Um, I got an Acura that may be gone and this Range Rover. Those are three definite vehicles that are going to be gone. And if the Range Rovers continue to rent out um, we will see because essentially I bought a car this weekend. I still have money from the sale of the Porsche. So next week I'm probably going to buy another car and I'm going to enable them with the GPS kill switches. So that will give me a total of 23 cars. And at an average rental rate of a thousand dollars per car, the BMW is like 1700 a month if I rent it out for 30 days and the Range Rovers are, but this puts me at about 25, 27,000 per month. Cause like this month I'm trending toward 18, maybe 19. But once again, I lost $3,000 on these people having my car and keeping it and refusing to bring it back. And let's talk about that. Once again, uh, personas, personalities. Um, one of the things that I'm becoming to know is I rejected some people this weekend because here's one of the things that can happen on hire car. When you try to uh, approve them and it rejects their application, that means their credit card got turned down. Uh, I'm starting to ignore these people because they're bogues. And one of the things that's happening is, and someone put this in the comments, and this is something I already know. The best renters are the people who rent by the week. They rent by the week. You don't have to worry about them. And they're, they're rarely late. They're rarely late. So yeah, this is what's happening in the car business. And I have a feeling <laughs> once the kill switches go into play, because um, I feel really good about the two people who um, rented today because they communicated well. That's a big sign. That's a really, really big sign. But yeah, these tricks sold my car to some, uns you know, to Mickey, who fortunately for Mickey, Mickey's a multimillionaire and he can take a $14,000 hit. But let's say, you are a regular person out there and you saved up your 14,000 and you paid it to these two criminals. You would be in a world of hurt because uh, essentially this is how LoJack works. LoJack is not GPS. LoJack, this is what happens. Once I filed my police report and put that VIN number in the system and once it hit the system as a stolen car, and it interfaced with LoJack's database and it was like, bam, it was a hit. It turned the LoJack on and the LoJack and was like, this is where I'm at. It sends a radio signal to the police and it's, it's in all cars. So if a police car is near where the Porsche is, it will activate in that police car and like, hey, this is where the stolen car is. It's pretty cool when you think about it. But yeah, whoever left that comment, if I had LoJack, you were 100% correct, my dude, you're 100% correct. And this is one of the things, because the, the Porsche was the high-end Porsche. 
it was the V8, it was the GTS, and whoever bought that Porsche had the foresight to put Jeep to low jack on it, and that's why I got my car back because lessons learned. Because like I said, last week, I've learned the power of taking action and moving quickly. And no one ever is gonna have my car for a month again because if, just going back, what I know now, if I had filed a police report a week, early, you know, the week after he had been, it had been missing, I would have had my car back way sooner, way sooner. Because the same thing would have happened. I would have filed a police report. It would have went out as a stolen car. Then boom, the low jack would have been activated and the police would have found my car. And also with Tiffany, and this is something else that you guys, just a little education. The police have what's called tag readers all over the place. And this is how the BMW was found. Essentially, it was under a tag reader. And it was like, oh, this is where I'm at. And they read that tag and they sent an alert to the police. The police sent, called up the record company. The record company came and got the car, found out the key was in the car, and they took the car. So going forward, because essentially, let me go ahead and tell you, I'm going to buy more BMWs, and I'm going to tell you why. A lot of people have been talking about buy Hondas, buy Acras. Let me go ahead and explain something to you guys that you don't understand. The most that I can rent out of a Camry is 35, 40 bucks a day. That's the most. And I'm talking about a 2012 Camry, right? I could go out and get a 2006 BMW and rent it out for $49 a day. And a 2012 Camry, if you don't believe me, go to car gurus and see how much they're going for. They're going for $10,000, dollars $14,000. $14, I get these BMWs for seventy two dollars to $8,500. So I spend less and I make more. And I'm willing to deal with the maintenance cost and stuff because I've calculated the math. And as a BMW owner and someone who's had many BMWs, I have a rough idea what the maintenance costs are going to be because essentially what's gonna happen is once I get everything fixed, it's just gonna stop breaking. And uh, some of these cars, uh, the white BMW, this is how I know before Tiffany got a hold of it. I took it to Global Imports, they went over it, the car was in perfect condition, mint condition. Now the check engine light's on, she's pressed the button up, she's messed up the console. I think she was living in the car, I really do. And um, there's signs of that. But I'm gonna buy more BMWs because uh, essentially I'm gonna do a video why I'm buying these BMWs because I buy all these cars and I've noticed some that these small car dealers who sell economy, deal, economy cars are struggling and they don't have the money to buy inventory. Yet every high-end luxury car, used car salesman, their lots are full. There's a place in Marietta called Malone's. There's a place in Marietta called CarZoom. They have 150 to 200 cars on their lots. And they don't sell Camrys. They don't sell Hondas. I have a friend who owns a car dealership and he told me, he said, people buy Camrys, Hondas and stuff because they have to. They really don't want these cars, but that's all they can afford. He said, because essentially, I've noticed with his inventory, he buys a lot of BMWs, he buys a lot of Mercedes. Uh, he does buy small cars, there's a mix, but I would say 70, 80% of his inventory is high end and 20% is on the lower end. And those are cash cars because the other day when I bought my BMW, uh, also I've learned when you buy these cars, you gotta buy them at the right price. And I made some mistakes and paid too much money for some cars because there's some cars that I could have got two cars for I paid for that one car. And uh, right now, since the Range Rovers are making money, because this girl has had this Range Rover, it's been like 2,200 bucks in rent. And I paid 1,500 for it. So the gray Range Rover has made about $4,000 and it cost me 15. So 
as long as it keeps performing like that, I may end up keeping it and I may just go ahead and, um, cause if it's making money, cause th this is one of the things I've learned. If it's rented and it stays rented, I'm going to keep it until it doesn't make any sense to keep. And I have one Range Rover. I, it's never broken down on me. And that car, that car's made close to $3,000. So that's the one that paid 15. I paid 15 for one. I paid 14, five for the other one. I have to go look at my records, but essentially they're, they're performing and they're making money. And essentially going forward, now that I feel empowered, now that I've solved my yard bird problem, because in the future, I'm not going to have any more of these yard birds because I've made 5,000 this month and these yard birds has cost me three. So this would be in an $8,000 I would have been at if it wasn't for these people who cost me money by keeping the car and cost me more money by damaging the car. And I don't understand that. I don't understand that. You already know that you're late and then you're going to just damage the car. Like I told Andrea, I think someone did that intentionally. I mean, I've, you just cannot convince me that wasn't done intentionally. And this is what the lower demographic will do. This is what the, it's, this is how they get down, man. It's how they get down. But yeah, this is the conclusion of the Porsche saga. It's gone. It's no longer in the fleet. It's sold. And I'm also today going to try a different type of strategy with Toro. And I'll talk about that in a different video because I'm going to enact it today. Because I know y'all been waiting for this. I know y'all been waiting for this. But yes, uh, next week I'm going to go down to Fulton County, file an arrest warrant for Darius, file an arrest warrant for Tiffany, just to cause him some pain. Because Darius is a professional criminal, so he don't really care. And Tiffany, I don't know what her issue is. And essentially, I'm going to you know, going back to my conversation with the hire car rep. He said a lot of owners don't want to do what they have to do to be successful in this business, which is kind of like at some point, I don't care if you homeless, pay me my rent, sell some pussy, do whatever you got to do to pay your rent. And that's going to be my attitude because I, I have a feeling when I have, you know, I'm going to do a video when I, the first kill switch, the kill switch chronicles, because I know they're coming because what I've seen with high car, there's a group of renters that are really good. But when you get your car in the hands of a yard bird who wants to keep your car by not paying you, you're, that's an opportunity cost. They're costing you money because they don't want to give you your asset back that you could rent out to someone who would pay you. So that was some. So I got some new training coming up because uh, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm going to, I'm being more efficient with this business. I'm managing it much better. And we're going to get into the corporate papers and there's some other ideas on coming. So don't buy anything right now. And we will be going through your LLCs, setting up your LLCs, and a whole lot more. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.